Hi, Dr. Pat here. We're doing another example or an extension of the previous example that I've done for quadratic functions. That was, uh, recall that we used a demand curve, a straight line. We multiplied by the price and we found the revenue to be quadratic. And so we just want to want to keep on playing with that formula. Just remember the two formulas that we have to play with are the vertex formula for finding the largest and smallest of a quadratic equation or function. And then we have the quadratic formula for finding when a function is equal to zero, a quadratic function is equal to zero. So that's what we'll be playing with. So keep those in mind, have those ready to go. Okay, so in the previous example, the previous video, I did the revenue formula. This was our demand that we gave, that we were given. And now we have some more information. Uh, we have information about a marginal cost. It's $12 per unit. We've got fixed cost at $15.25. And now we have two different questions. The first question is what price optimizes profit? And then what price uh, gives us break even? And so that's kind of what we'll be playing with, these two different questions. Optimizing profits, we're basically looking for the largest profit possible. So what price will give us the largest profit? When I'm optimizing a quadratic situation, I'll be thinking vertex formula. So somewhere down the line, I want to make a formula for profit and then use the vertex formula. Now when we do break even, break even is the idea is when profit is equal to zero, when we begin to make profit. And so that would be the quadratic formula, because that quadratic formula is when a, the function is equal to zero. Okay, so let's kind of play with this. Uh, when we're playing with profit, remember profit is revenue minus cost. We have a revenue formula from the previous uh, video using this demand function. Just basically multiply this by P, uh, P and that got our revenue. What we need to do now is create a formula for cost and then we can take the difference and we have our formula for profit. Now when we're playing with cost we have two key ideas that we have in this uh, word problem here. The first one is that our marginal cost is $12 and our fixed cost is $15.25. Now for a linear situation this is what it is because our marginal cost is always staying at $12. We don't see it changing differently. So when the cost, marginal cost is always the same number, it's constant, then we have a linear situation. And so our cost formula then is fixed cost, we use FC, plus marginal cost times Q. Marginal cost there uh, would be 12. And so then we just plug the numbers in. So we plug in the 12 for the marginal cost, the 1525 for the fixed cost, and we now have our cost formula. So we have the revenue formula from before, that's what I'm putting right here, and then we have our new fixed cost. I mean not fixed cost, our formula for cost function, the cost function itself. But wait a minute, if you look at this, the revenue formula is in terms of P, and the cost function is in terms of Q. We now have a profit formula that has two variables. We have to make a decision. Which way do we go? Do we make this formula in terms of price, or do we make this formula in terms of quantity? You can go either way with it mathematically. So then it goes back to what are we trying to find? The question was asking what price gives us the largest uh, that optimizes profit? And the other question was what price for break even? So the question is asking for price. So then my goal here is I'm going to get rid of the quantity. And so I'm going to replace quantity Q with a formula that involves price. And so remember our demand function was Q equals 220 minus 4P. And so that means wherever we see a Q, we can replace it with this 220 minus 4P. And so that's what we're going to do. And that will make this whole formula have the variable P. P. And so that's what I do right there. So this Q that we see here, I'm going to replace it and put the formula that we have for that quantity. So that's what we've got. And now we're just going to do some algebra to clean up this formula. So let's multiply the 12 through, and that's what I get there when I do the 12 through. And then the next thing we're going to do is, oh, combine these two numbers right here, this 1525 and 2640. That's where that 46, 4165 comes from. And then the next step is let's uh, do the subtraction. When we do the subtraction, uh, recall that this negative minus a negative 48p makes it a positive, so that's why you're seeing this become a 268. And then we have a minus 4165, excuse me. And so now we have a nice formula ready to go for profit. 
Now to optimize this, remember to optimize, it's the vertex formula, negative b over 2a. And so basically, we've got our b is the number, the coefficient of the p term. a is the coefficient of the power 2 term. And then this last one right over here would be the c term. Well, we plug our a, b into our vertex formula and we get 33.5 so what we're looking at here is $33.50 is our price that will give us the largest profit so when you're a business trying to figure out what price do we charge this thing 33.5 is going to be the right price that gives us the largest amount of profit now another idea that we have here is break even so this is when what price would we be able to start making profit okay so that's the key when uh, which prices there are certain prices we can price it too low and not make enough uh, money revenue wise to offset the cost and so that's where we got to play this game here now when we're doing break even what we're looking for is when profit is equal to zero that means quadratic formula so that's this formula here the quadratic formula is when we're going to be equal to zero our break even and so our B value is still the same 268 our A value is still the same, negative 4, and our C value is going to be 4165, negative 4165. I apologize, I had those all in the wrong order, but hey, we'll get there. And so uh, what we have here, at, at, we're using the quadratic formula, just plugging the numbers into the appropriate spots, doing the calculations, and you get two answers. Because of that plus or minus, you get two answers. And so now the question becomes, is it 24.5 or is it 42.5? Which one is the appropriate answer or both answers? And so if there's a little confusion here right now and that's okay. Um, quadratic formula will give us two answers most of the time. And so then let's take a look at this graph here. So what I've done is graph this profit formula based upon the price. And uh, so basically what we're looking at here is a really low spot right here. These are prices that will not make us any money. So any price right here, we're not making any money. And so let's analyze this really good, really clearly. So we're looking for break even. So we're looking for the zeros. We're looking for where the profit graph crosses the x axis. And so what we're looking at here <clears throat> is this. Which one do we want? How do we interpret this? Well, what we have here is this is the price that will first begin when we f begin to have an opportunity to have a profit graph above the x-axis. And so this is really our break even. Okay. The second zero here is a transition from making profit to losing money. Okay, so this does have a mathematical, it's as when the profit's equal to zero, but I have to be frank with you, or I have to be honest with you, any business person who is going to look at the transition from making money and losing money, if they really want to go beyond that point, that's pretty crazy. That's not a break-even point, that's basically a stupid decision point, all right? So what we're looking at is when do we want to start making profit, that's the key, what price, what's my bottom line price? because if I want to look at profit so I want to make sure I'm, I'm pricing myself right here so this is our break-even it's the first uh, number that allows us to have a positive profit okay so that's our break-even there and that's what we're looking at it's the first number so our answer here 24.5 so a price of 24.5 will basically get uh, uh, begin to make profit. So anything above 24.5 and between 42.5. So between 24.5 and 42.5, we can make a profit. So that's basically in my negotiations. I'm telling my salespeople, make sure you're you're negotiating a price between 24.5 and 42.5. Otherwise, we're losing money. If we have to go below 24.5, it's got to be for a really good reason why we'd want to do that. And you might be asking yourself, dude, uh, why does why does a profit you know why does a price bigger than 42.5 make it uh, make a, a loss and we lose we we start losing thing here? Remember, this is all based upon that demand function. We can you know if I charged 45 dollars for my item, 
there's not very many people going to want to buy it from me. They're going to buy it from somebody else at a cheaper price. And so if I charge 45, I can sell some of them, but I'm going to lose money here at 45. My profit's going to be negative. And that's because you can basically overprice your item. And so that's why we want to be careful. And that's why the mathematics is really cool here for business people is because it gives us an idea of how we can negotiate with our, our customers. Okay, so I'm hoping this makes sense to see where the mathematics can actually be used in a real business situation. Thanks and have a good day.